and well roam a bit here and obviously just use the sandstorm to its full potential and yeah so far man power range they're taking a sweet as time um it still could be mirana in the mid lane maybe some vain mirana yep. mid shenanigans but uh, i don't know might as well just go draw lane yeah i i, I agree i i kind of want to see an aggro try here but but uh, it's also going to depend on what Fnatic reveal as their um, their other tri lane here. What carry are they really going to be running? Because it may be a little too risky here. Power Rangers, they're just left with uh, what should be two solos. Uh, if they do run Marana tri lane, we just need to see two more solos to be picked up by them. And uh, I don't know. Muckle, what are you really favoring right now as far as mids go? I think with the two supports you have, maybe you could get a little bit greedy and go for like some sort of pickoff, uh, like for Ten example a Storm Spirit remain. type hero, but that would also Fanatics leave you exposed to mid. the high amount of disables of Shadow Shaman. It, like it goes both ways, right? He's an easy pickoff for you once you have the Orchid, but he's also kind of deadly in that he has so many disables against you. Hmm. I wonder, Fnatic, there is still a Naga Siren in the pool, there's still a crazy pick of something like uh, Medusa, which they picked up for Hani as well. <laughs> so, yep. And, oh, there is actually a Lycan as well, Radiant wow. Team yeah, I mean, look at this yeah. stuff. 300 less HP on his level 3 ultimate, and suddenly he's not a tier 1 pick anymore, and... Ah, I still want to say the hero is really strong at what he's great. And this is mm. this crazy split pushing damage, especially against those tier 1s. And if we're watching Power Rangers right now, they do have some remain. very mid-game focused lineup. But they can't really defend the towers nicely. Five if they get behind, remaining. the Lycan is going to do wonders here. At the same time, Lycan can't really fall behind. If he does, he's going to be Reserve in a world time. of hurt against this lineup of power range. He's going to get ganked, bolted by the Bane. So much lockdown. And you mentioned this. This Fanatics is the Bane. Turn to uh, no pun intended yeah. against the Lycan. You know, this is something that you, you're right. When he got that bit of a nerf, it didn't really affect how um, how he was typically run. Like, he was typically run with Necronomicon, heavy split push, all this sort of deal. He wasn't really picked up for too Radiant much fighting action. Picking. Like, eventually he would get to that point, but for the first 25 minutes or so, he was oftentimes being used for split push. So, in that way, he didn't get nerfed at all. But the 300 um, HP nerf definitely does hurt him a lot. Uh, in in those actual team fights. So if you're forced in those sort of situations where you can't actually just split push your your uh, way to victory here, then and you are actually forced to fight, then that HP loss is actually a pretty big deal. Ten just less survivability and Lycan as a whole is going to hurt him quite a bit. The Lone Druid was an interesting pickup here from Power Rangers. They get themselves a little bit of pushing power as well as a solid solo. Reserve I'm thinking they're going to go a little bit team fight oriented remaining. with their last pick here. And sure enough, they get a Beastmaster, an excellent initiator. Um, so I think they're going to be running this like sort of four versus five lineup where they take a look at Fnatic. They go, they're, li they're a little bit greedy here. They're not, they don't have nearly as much fighting power. Even with this last pick, they won't have enough fighting power to match our four heroes. So they can go ahead and run around with the Tri-Lane plus Beastmaster and let the, the Lone Druid just safely uh, farm up as much as they want. Pit Muckle, um, I'm, I'm leaning towards an aggro try here. It's obviously going to depend remaining. on what Fnatic uh, pick up as their last hero, um, whether Five or not they feel remaining. that the mid is going to threaten them at all. But I personally am leaning heavily towards an aggro Reserve try, with, especially with the Lycan. He's another hero that does not really do well in tri lane versus tri lane scenarios. Yeah, I absolutely agree. The Hull is great, but that's it. Right. You won't have any sort of levels up on those uh, nasty wolves. I mean, Lycan is not going to get too many levels here, so he's kind of going to be underleveled, and that's a really big issue for him. So, huh, it's going to be rather interesting. Although, one more thing here. Maybe Fnatic can pick something which enables him for a level 1 Roche. Because there is still the possibility. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to happen, but there might be some pocket threats coming out here. Against the Beastmaster and a that's very hard to pull off, obviously, because there's going to be a beer scouting. Ah, but maybe still. I mean, we saw crazier things early on, and uh, especially Fnatic against Na'Vi, remaining. but... <laughs> that that Fnatic right. Na'Vi oh, so weird. Windranger... I got a big fan of this Wind Ranger being picked up in the mid roll. Uh, we didn't really see, even when she was picked up mid back in the day, it wasn't it's seen as highly uh, like physical damage oriented as she used to be. But um, yeah, nowadays, I, I love watching it, man. The, the bust of Focus Fire make it so viable. Dude, this is a one position Wind Ranger. Honey one position? Like okay. It. Okay. No, I, I, I love this. Uh huh. Me too, man. Me too. 
because now I actually think twice about the aggro try. I think they can yeah. still work it out, but it's dangerous, man. When you have Hal coming out from the middle lane and then chilling touch on three ranged heroes, Prepare it's risky battle. as hell to try and run that because even if you do lead with a sleep arrow uh, and they don't actually juggle it, if they still get off Chilling Touch and how the chances are you're still going to be trading uh, a kill for kill. You might get the kill first because you have extra burst damage while they rely on a little bit more right clicks, but um, I still think you're going to be training quite a bit in this aggro try now that there's not going to be a Lycan, uh, but is going to be replaced by a Wind Raider. Yeah, exactly. And you're looking at a potential plus 70 damage up on level one already. Just the Chilling Touch as well as, oh, and both of these guys are scouting each other out. Wait a second. Oh, no tail. They don't see him yet. This is exactly the vision mm -hmm. they have, and they have no idea that there is a no tail. Oh, this could. Okay, now they know. All right, they know there is a ward as well. No tail knows. Do they have a counter though? Yes, they do. Oh, yep. that's a big deal. No vision coming up from power range. That's such a big deal here. And well, everyone else is just going to be completely fine. Successful defensive, successful. Yeah, that was uh, hugely important. Uh, positioning situation there for uh, no tail spying that out with a um, I, and I really like this ward too because it's a ward that you don't commonly see normally you see it in uh, maybe these kind of areas maybe you have one of these uh, but it gives you some decent vision of what's going on in this tower area uh, it gives you a little bit of laning uh, information the, battle the vision is kind of cut off in going into the jungle area namely because of this tree but it does give you that kind of heads up of what's going to be happening without having to put yourself too far out there if he ran all the way in here he would have gotten caught out um, trying damage. to throw down a ward he would have been slept up and probably arrowed and that would have been first blood so that ward and placing it from the hard camp is uh, a pretty smart idea overall also no tail boots first no other items mm -hmm. nothing else he yeah. just wants to find kills and well if you're playing a shadow shaman he doesn't have any sort of good movement speed so you might as well just pick up those boots and they need to make stuff happen though in the top lane that's going to be not not an easy lane at all for Fnatic. Although we mentioned it, it's going to be way better than with the Lycan. And so far, well, everyone's just going to be going ahead denying. Mm, I don't think they can really go here, FNG. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, not quite. Yeah, I mean, like, again, just three different range heroes. Not only is that we're going to work really well with the Howl Chilling Touch, but it's also really good for juggling sleep in order to dodge the uh, obvious no. sleep arrow combo. No. So, you know, there, there are a lot of good ways for them to deal with this aggro try. At the uh, middle lane, we're going to have a Beastmaster versus the uh, Lycan, which should be a fine matchup for, for Hani. They actually did go in here, stunning up No Tail. First it goes off on Aeron, and they're going to be able to get that first blood just before the first Bane goes down. The and now J4 keeps on going with Turn on Aaron now, and the cold feet going off. They need another stun. Rose Strike's gonna go off soon. Moon still gets held up by that cold feet, and J4 on his way out, but he's gonna be copping a lot of damage here as uh, as he retreats. So in the end, not really going to the favor of Power Rangers, despite the fact that it started out well with them getting the first blood. Yeah, and that's exactly what you mentioned in the draft. Like, as soon as we saw the Wind Ranger, the turnaround potential is so huge, and this is just, yeah, this is just showing off here. And, uh, well, suddenly it's one for two, and I'm not sure if Power Rangers really want to go back to this try, and it looks like they kind of don't. Having the Bane Mirana is going to be all there is to it, and you can just I mean, you can just farm up the Mirana at this point in time. Maybe not get the kills, but this lane is not designed to get the kills. Anyway, it's not against the Wind Ranger, no way. Yeah, I, I think they should probably put the Sand King in the safe lane now, have him pull. And I think that's their best option here. You don't have too much of a threat as a dual lane um, against this tri lane. While they can react pretty well, they it's very obvious when they're trying to be aggressive. They're, their only hope of initiation is really the Shackle Shaman. Shadow Shaman and all the disables that he has uh, is also really lacking in, um, in longer range, right? Like, it's very obvious when he's running at you and trying to hex you up that uh, they're trying to go. So for the most I part, they should be able to respond slow. fine. I think this dual lane could work out just fine, but they're going to bring the Sand King back anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the only thing um, I still want to point out, mid lane, so far Han is doing a really good job. He's leading the CS chart, even though there is a Beastmaster, played by Scandal, who's going to be spamming out his Wild Axes, as well as his Border Crowing. So, this should have been a way better lane, and you know, well top lane, there's your sleep, and the arrow combination up onto Aaron, and they're just going to bring him down very fast. And now, well, it's a two for two, and I was apparently wrong. I thought saying he would just go and head into the jungle and get his home up there this way, but instead, they rotate him top, and they're going to get a kill. That's a big deal. Yeah, I was in support of it too. I really thought that, uh, you know, once you failed that, like, when you go aggressive trine lanes, that first battle that happens, you have to win it. 
Like, once you lose one fight, normally it just ends up snowballing against you. You get a slight experience advantage to the enemy. They get level 3 before you. They have their next level of nukes. It's just a big advantage for them. Uh, on top of that, they also get a lot of room to be able to pull middle lane. They are going to try and sleep up here, the follow-up. They do have Burrow Strike coming in. He will be able to get in range in time, and that will be the kill as the Wild Axe is thrown out by Scandal and Shirt. So, good little gank there on Hani. And uh, leaving Marana, apparently solo top lane. He's going to be chased out, but he probably won't be going down anytime. And the exact opposite of what I thought was going to happen here, FNG seems to be going to the bottom lane. They're going to try and just ensure some runes. Double damage is going to be found for him. And uh, Scandal going to be on his way. So we'll see how these supports want to rotate. If they continue moving around, if maybe they go to this bottom lane, Cheshire Cat does have his level 3 bear, which with the entangle, the large, long amount of disables that they have with the Burrow Strike and everything else, uh, I think there's a pretty good chance you can rely on entangle tangle happening and at that point Lone Druid is not that bad of a laner. No, absolutely. Lone Druid is actually excellent, especially against all those melees. And he picks up an oof, so the upper phantom is going to be helping out so much. Mm -hmm. And when there is a bane with heading in, and suddenly it looks like it's going to be a mid lane gang, but there is no mana up on the sand king, so I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish here. Uh, but yeah, it's very good. And so far, well, Cheshire is can't. He's just crushing the lane. Um, not as hard as I'm as I want to say, Ooh. I would have liked to, but he's still doing an excellent job. Trixie, though, Never he was early on cutting up the, cutting the waves behind this tower, so he actually got some experience under his own tower. And this is just how strong this um, Lone Red is. And, well, here we go, mid lane, wraparound gank, but uh, not finding anyone. They really just keep on trying this over and over again. I think they had a very obvious timing, which was if they never revealed themselves, Beastmaster Scandal was about to hit level 6. And then you don't actually have to rely on the supports getting close enough. You actually have then the initiation with your laning heroes. So if they just sat back and not revealed themselves that they wanted to go for another gank on middle, I think there was a good chance they would have caught out Hani again. But no. because they revealed themselves a little bit too early before Scandal was level 6, he couldn't hit the stun. Hani walked away from the attempted disables. And then he just played passive from there. So until he sees these supports reveal themselves, he's probably not going to be going too far far forward. Denied. Mm, yeah, exactly. This fear of the support combination is way too strong. And also, you have the damage and the burst strike, so you've got so much lockdown. And then you have a raw as well from Scandal. And you just don't want to give the Beastmaster his early kills, because suddenly he's going to be way like, I don't know, Blink, Dagger, Aghanim, Scepter, whatever you name it. It doesn't matter. Because if he gets this uh, sort of great start with a few uh, kills here and there, he's going to be a real pain in the rear to deal with. But so far, well, it's a rather I don't want to say. Whoa, damn! Oy, oy, oy. You should see close. that arrow. That was uh, that was a maxed Crazy. out range arrow. He was just like kind of scouting that one, and uh, there was obviously no way he could get a kill off of it. But that was rather rather lucky. I'm, I'm gonna call it lucky. I don't think I'm gonna call that skill because he had no vision. I think he just wanted vision of the jungle to be able to see what supports were in the area and whether or not he could move forward aggressively or not. Once again, the mid lane. This is this is an issue for the side of Power Rangers. They're wasting so much time here, and they kind of do want to kill Hani, but Hani is playing this out as well as he's uh, doing his turn. Oh well, he moved. Oh, it's gonna be alright. Leaps away, it's gonna be fine. But you know, Hani just using his wolves to just last it each and every time, and now also going into the Roshan, and suddenly die advantage. I need to play here. Yeah, but this is risky as hell. I feel. I mean, you already had the pressure of the two supports constantly uh, moving around between these lanes, I, it's, I feel that's really risky when you do have roaming supports like this. It doesn't take much to just, uh, while you're checking a rune or something like that, to go and pop into the Roche pit, especially when Lycan is very obviously missing. Uh, now the shot of Shaman replacing him, there's nothing else that you do with a Lycan except for possibly jungle or go into Roshan. Roshan isn't down yet. That's a high priority for you to keep tabs on, and Power Rangers just have not checked and won't be checking at all. Yeah, but since it's the bane, as well as the sand is level. Oh, there you go. They start running towards that Roche pit. J4's making his way over. Scandal is uh, going to be revealing some of it. They see a bunch of heroes here. They now reveal Hani. Great double stomp. Now the double edge as well going out. The stun on No Tail. But here comes the Baron. They're going to be able to finish off No Tail real quickly. But it's at the cost of Scandal's life by Steel. Maybe not. They don't have anything extra to be able to. Oh, the power shot comes in from Era. Nicely timed fly. An unfortunate disable there that's going to lead into the arrow. What a lucky entangle coming out from Cheshire Cat. They keep on moving forward, chasing away the rest of these heroes. And now they're going to check out Roshan. It is sitting at about 2,000 health, but that's way too much. And I don't know, like, this is a bit risky here for the side of Fnatic. 
Oh, at the same time though, PR, they could have tried to go for the Roshan themselves, but always there is this uh, scouting out of the Lycan Wolves, keeping taps on them. And yeah, and with the, mm. the, low, uh, the low death timers on everybody, no, I exactly. think we're just going to see like this big old standoff is what we're going to be seeing here. A nice blast does go down. They have a stun on Trixie. They're going to try and follow that up. Arrow's going to lead into the ramp, just making sure no heroes can come by. Trixie holding onto his stomp. Now going to try and throw up, but gets burst down by the Axe. No Tail's going to be next on the menu. He falls. Fnatic just uh, losing hero after hero here as they're very, very well split up. I think that Arrow was a really smart decision. They had Centaur already locked in. They knew they would be able to burrow strike him. So the Arrow going out from the ramp made sure that no one could come down and defend him. They had to actually run away from the ramp in order to dodge the arrow. And at that point in time, then Trixie's screwed. Dyer's You're too split, and the Power Rangers attack. staying at a, as a tight-knit group. You can't really break that, especially not with the heroes that you have. Yeah, and this is once again coming out here as a Dyer's win for PR, tower. which is surprising, but it all comes down to the Morana. Morana is so good, and you mentioned this. It's a zoning arrow, as well as Cheshire Cad. He's got level 8, and his bear is on 2.7k HP and 6 armor. Mm -hmm. There is nothing you can do 10 minutes in against such a tanky bear. Nothing. And he's just going to ride the game run down, and this is what happened. A few entangles, given they were really lucky and in really good positions, um, still, you kind of have to expect this as Spider Fanatic. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised. And it just gets better for PR as soon as FNG gets his level 6. Because suddenly you're going to have an insane amount of just lockdown on the side of, uh, well, PR. Yeah, I, and honestly, I mean, that was just, I felt like such a foolish idea trying to do Roshan like that when you have, uh, when you're going up against a Beastmaster. Like, it's it's like trying to do it up against, like, a Clockwork mid or something. Like, it's, it's he's right next to the Roche pit. And at any point in time, you can just throw a hawk over there. The roaming supports, they're going to be around. Like, I think Fnatic were trying to, like, maybe uh, get some sort of gank. They had three heroes already in position. I don't think they expected Power Rangers to commit so many heroes to running to that Roche pit. But still, that was a very risky maneuver by them. Did not pay out at all. And uh, possibly maybe even more heroes coming down. They're going to cut through these trees. Scandal was thinking about just ramboing through that tower there in order to get this done, but instead they're just going to push it down. Dyer's they have the illusions coming out from Beastmaster, helping them out. Dyer's if they can drag the creep wave away, fortified. this could be a large amount of damage on the tower. Yeah, and I mean, they're pushing the top tier 1 at the same time. There's going to be pressure being dropped here on this uh, bottom tier 1 as well, because there's just Cheshire's cat. He's uh, scouting out the runes right now, Radiant's and oh, he's also keeping cat on the, on the Roshan. That's so smart of him. That's a really attack. smart play here. So he knows. Now they, they try to just you know, do some sneaky stuff, and it just didn't work out. Dyer's top tower and what are they really fallen. trading for? Like, they're pushing in this middle tier 1 tower, but it's not going to go down in time. So they won't gain that map control. Roshan still being um, contested enough that Hani can't go in there. I think they, in that sort of situation, when they see that many heroes, I think they needed a 5-man Roche. 5-man Roche or 5-man that middle tier 1 tower. They needed some sort of objective to be traded there because Power Rangers, um, with the way they spread and they kept tabs on everything, um, basically ensured that no one one hero could take too much, right? Like, Era by himself beating on the tier one tower was not going to be enough to take it. Hani beating on Roshan was not enough to take Roshan in time. If they committed to one goal instead of trying to spread themselves thin, maybe they could have actually traded decently. But now Power Rangers just continue the lead that they took after those uh, devastating Roche fights for Fnatic. You would see already about a 1,500 experience lead and uh, almost a 4,000 gold lead. So rather far ahead, double damage going to be found by Scandal and might just run into Hani here as the uh, boar has revealed him. And he's got his Aghanim set up very, very soon. This is such a quick Aghanim set up. And also Scandal, now he goes to the raw. It's got to be noted, just getting dropped here. There's no way to stop him. But he's getting stepped up. There's nothing they can do. They can't even dispel it in time here, it looks like. And that's all there is to it. Even Mirana Ultimate was used. It's a good kill, but they've lost so many... Uh, I want to say teamfight ultimates up from Radiant's Fnatic. Middle tower is under it was attack. kind of worth it. Just kill down the super annoying Rasta, and he's not. He still has to Yeah, no, attack. those rotations just means that now Power Rangers is going to be able to push down this bottom lane. All they have is an ice blast. They're going to try and help towards some heroes in, but. Even if Power Rangers don't take the tier 1 power, it's still free damage. And as they rotate out, looks like they're able to get a kill on Trixie. So, Scandal, I'm not sure how they were able to land. It looks like arrow. a sleep arrow combo yep. is what got him. But, Dyer's uh, top tower is so under attack. <laughs> yeah, they, they just put too many heroes 
going into that bottom lane and they just continue the pressure. So Power Rangers doing a great job staying split and keeping pressure on Fnatic and always initiating at the right times. Yeah, and at the same time, still, they're leading in CS, and this is something you usually see from those um, rather active teams. Dyer's if you take down the kills, sometimes attack. you just fall behind in top. But since they're getting all those pickups and the towers to boot, and the CS as well, so it's just a win-win-win. Um, what is not a win-win-win could be this Roshan here, but they're committing so much to it that you might have had to set a ball here. Yeah, this is what the PR are doing. They've got a rally coming up rather soon here on the just get. So, might as well just wait for it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, ideally, you could have done a little bit more there, maybe take this bottom tower with the Lone Druid, but uh, it, it took them a while to be able to realize, okay, they used wards for that, there are heroes surrounding the pit, we can't go for that Roche fight. I think that was wise of them not to go for it. And uh, they still are farming up decently. FNG still pushing in that top lane. He's joined by Moon. They've got this nice little kill team here that any one or two heroes run at them, they're going to be caught. But three heroes are going to be a little overwhelming here for this combo. Question is whether or not Fnatic can catch up. They do have the Centaur ultimate. It's going to go off. They get the sheep on Moon. Now the combo up with the shackles. Moon's going to be copping a lot here, but he still has a leap. And Centaur does not have that blink dagger. He's trying to get in range. The double edge will Dyer's put him... No! Oh, Fiend's grip gone. coming out from FNG. Cancels Dyer's it towards the end there. He's trying to get as many of it. Oh, beautiful little juking here. You're going to get back through the trees. Try and teleport away. Where's the disable to get it in time? FNG who might shadow. He might actually get away from them. The stun goes out. Counter ward will be enough to be able to get the kill. But at the same time, yeah, the bottom lane, they pushed in. They killed Wind Ranger earlier. And uh, took a tier one tower, possibly may even take a tier two. And middle tower may fall soon as well. Yeah, and if you pick up an Aghanim Scepter onto Scandal here this early on, your raw has literally no cooldown. 45 seconds, this is nothing. And this is why I personally really like to see Aghanim Scepter if you actually get it off <laughs> at such a great timing. Because sometimes we see Beastmaster just heading for the Blink Dagger. That's completely fine. But if you have the farm for this Aghanim Scepter, it's so good. And we can see this already. I mean, Scandal is doing a great job. Out of the 10 kills Power Rangers do have, Scandal was just doing work in seven of them. And he died once. I mean, damn, this guy. We're seeing, uh, I feel like I'm watching a little bit of a, a nature documentary right now. You, you've got the pack of wolves hunting down the pack of boars. <laughs> if coming out from Beastmaster. These, uh, these poor little boars just don't really stand a chance against these hefty wolves. But uh, I, they, they are just like all the bears. Oh, Jesus. Instant root. They don't have any follow-up, though. J4, he does not have his blink dagger yet. Unfortunately, it was coming to him, but... He didn't have the jump bro strike to be able to combo it up and maybe get a little extra damage. And uh, I'm hearing like double edge. Trixie's just farming. He just needs his blink dagger as soon as possible. So he's trying to burst down some creep waves. Radiant structures yeah, I mean, are I mean, what can you do really? And now Fnatic, oh man, this is so much quicker in the mid lane. Attack. Get the tower, get the hell out of there. Just right away. Radiant's and now, yeah, they're just doing fallen. it. So smart play by Fnatic. And they even get the last hit on the Lycan. So suddenly, hmm. After his not that crazy start, I mean, he was doing great in the CS side, and he's still doing quite good. Um, he actually got quite a few items, and the question is, what would you actually like to see? Do you want to see a Necrobook or a BKB here? Because I think one of those two items is going to be the right choice here. Um, Necrobook, not really favoring the BKB up against the Beastmaster, especially since he has Axe already. Um, that disable mixed in with the potential uh, Entangle plus Fiend's Grip, I think there are too many things to go through BKB that you can um, rely on it too much. So I think he's going to have to go the Necrobook route and um, just hope for the best that that will be enough because Power Rangers, the, with the way they're taking this lead, they're going to be able to just uh, force some team fights here soon. Right now, they're doing a lot of split pushing and everything else, but I think eventually they will be forced to go s for some team fights, but that's going to be after the Radiance is finished. That's re really where you hit a big spike where the Radiance is super effective with all that burn damage. It's on a very tanky unit that does not die very quickly. At that point in time, I think you have Radiance enough to be able to wreck team fights, attack. especially since we have additional items like Agonims on Beastmaster, like the Blink Dagger on J4. Those just kind of give you even more incentive to go for the 5v5. So I think we're going to see them five man down some of these tier twos very soon. And that's very smart play by PR. They have taken attack. down two towers at the cost of one, Dyer's pretty much. And now Fnatic are coming in. Oh, wow. This is so much commitment here. They need to get something done here. That's a nice shackle. It's a good start. But can they get the deny on the tower as well? Yes, they can. Okay, so Dyer's they take one. Tower has been mm. Are they going to be losing one, though, in the top lane? It looks like they're just content losing this one. No. Oh, arrows and cooldown. 
This could have been big. This could have been really big. Look That's at FNG nice. though. He's sitting in this little corner. He ate himself a little hole there and uh, was ready just to be able to protect the Marana if um, if anything went tits them. over. Hmm? It, it would be a three versus five, but they had no idea that FNG actually could be out. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, rather unfortunate, rather unfortunate. Well, maybe they can catch it out. Well, of course, they can't really go for Hani here. He does still have that Aegis. They can try and lead into a Burrow Strike arrow stun, but committing the Epicenter to killing him is not going to be worth it. Hmm. So, yeah, I agree. for the most part, I don't think they're going to be really trying to look for it. Trixie is coming in to back up this, uh, this Lycan, and Power Rangers are wisely teleporting away at the right times. J4 may stick out here. Though, if he feels like this push is really coming in, he could sit in this hiding Dyer's hole right here, throw down the attack. epicenter, and he's got a huge range to be able to catch out heroes. Wherever the team fight occurs is all in this area he can get to with that one position. So I think this Dyer's is really smart. The rest of Power Rangers need attack. to get to this tier one tower, though, to Radiant's help them contest. Yeah, and there's no way for that he can actually see this. There's, oh, now he's going, he's jumping, and now let's see the damage. Scandal had his ace rune, he turned into a chicken, but he's able to get away. The bear is going to be beat down. They know the radiance is up on it. Hani's trying to commit. They will kill the bear finally. Uh, so a centaur in exchange for 300 gold coming out from the bear. It's not terrible for Fnatic, but they just uh, were unable to uh, really stick around these wards, which means they're just going to be farmed up. So that's a little bit extra gold. Sure, they may, might have gotten the tier one tower, but it's certainly at a cost, and I feel that Power Rangers can now push in aggressively. They know that the Centaur ultimate's gonna be on cooldown for a little while, and uh, the Serpent Wards as well is another big ability. So they can probably take this tier two and probably transfer into middle lane and push that tier two as well. I feel the Radiance is just gonna be such a strong factor that uh, they need to push this advantage that they have right now. Yeah, I agree. Although this still would have been a way better team fight for Power Rangers in my, Dyer's in my, I don't know. Like attack. I was sure Power Rangers would crush it, and they kind of opened the Dyer's And now FNG, I oh, can completely cut out FNG. What the hell was he thinking? Now they got the ultimate once again from Scandal. Oh, that's a good one. Nice move going up. On. And then still Shadow. He does do so much work here. It's a very good tackle, but Trixie is gonna be. Oh, no, no, he's still alive, and no tell us for Hani. They're both going down, and oh no, error. That's a good sleep. And is he gonna get brought up? Oh. Trixie reinitiation, finding three stuns, but can't really get away. It doesn't look right big. They're splitting their damage a little bit too much, and that means with the center ultimate, they will be able to get out. They brought both heroes below half health. If they focus one or the other um, with all their damage, it would have been an easy kill, but they, they got a little greedy. They got a little greedy and were punished for it as Fnatic was able to walk away decently intact. That was such a great little situation there. The Roar stopping the Shadow Shaman, freeing up the Bane, and he immediately turned down, Fiend script the, the, um, the Lycan, while the double Burrow Strike through, grabbing the Windranger as well. That was the, the key thing, like stopping that Windranger from being able to throw down a Shackle, or stopping Shadow Shaman from being able to throw down uh, like a Hex on that, uh, on that Bane, just allowed them to completely destroy the team fight. No tail gonna jump in here on Moon. He's gonna finish him off. This is a deep dive, but he will be worth it if he can get Moon, but he doesn't get it. I think he missed micro his wards a little bit, and now he falls. And that just means not only a kill going the way of the Radiant, but also, again, that ward, precious, precious ward gold. Crazy no tail. Crazy no tail indeed, man. Moon is mad. He's getting so much hit in this game so far. And he actually didn't die. Like, oh my god. Yeah, I don't know how Moon survived there. He was at like half health, surrounded by wards, and was shackled. Um, I think he missed a couple of ward hits there. That was um, a bit unfortunate there. That should have secured it. That's crazy. Anyways, um, so what Lycan actually went for, and this is a, I want to say a really good pickup. It's going to be a hard. Because you mentioned it, like, Mika, but he's not going to be helping you at all. But there's way too much damage on the yard. Because this is like, and he can't run rampant as much as he wants to. But right after all those disables are done, maybe he's going to be this uh, very annoying frontline sort of tanky style guy who's just going to go in. Because he's already doing the damage. Mm -hmm. And the real one position carry, it's going to be error. He is going for the Aghanim Scepter, so 
Oh, yeah, yeah. oh no, FNG. This is going to be big The sleep. Epicenter will go off eventually here from J4. Meanwhile, they're just going to rely on their single target disables. And once Fnatic come out to start committing, here comes that epicenter. Comes in, grabs two with that burrow strike. Fly, not going to live. Arrow will be able to get out. Good for staff. It's going to save J4 for a little bit. The wolves are in hot pursuit, but they're going to get cleaned up real quickly. They only get the one kill there that came out from J4. Trixie's low. Arrow's going to come out. Snags, no tail. The shackle shot goes out, but it's not going to be enough as the bird from the bear is going to be enough, and now they can start beating down these tier threes. Glyph is going to be popped, and it looks like Power Rangers, they're happy with just forcing that one out. They're going to back up now and just continue to uh, push in some of these side lanes. Both bottom and top are already pushing in, so there's a large amount of farm available to them right now. So they would just want to take that. They don't want to push their luck too much. It's not like they really fall off um, anytime soon. They, I feel they will fall off a little bit. It's only the Lone Druid and the Murano who really will carry on. Actually, as they say, that Beastmaster with an Ags, he could probably build into um, even something oriented towards like a Necro book, maybe an AC, mm. but that's typically on the Lone Druid. Um, but he's actually pretty damn decent going into the late game as well. So as I say that, I feel like Power Rangers have a really good late game compared to Fnatic, who only really have the Lycan. Wind Ranger, eh, I feel like she's more of a mid-game carry. Focus Fire is strong, but I don't I don't really place it in the you're going to go late game and just crush everyone with only your single target. I'm actually not sure. I think the, the Focus Fire is going to be excellent in taking down the bear. That's true. And if you take this one out of the equation, mm -hmm. the only real carry is going to be moving. Everything else is not going to be CC. The CC is great. Like, don't get me wrong. It is just going to be going through the BKBs whenever there's any sort of BKBs that want to panic. And this is why it's great for that game as well. But just from a raw damage point, hmm, I want to say this Wind Ranger pickoff can work out. The issue is, Era is completely underleveled. He's got no yeah. levels to speak of. He's level 9. Everyone else in the game is like way higher than he is. And we can just see on the on the level chart, on the hero level chart, the whole Toronto of Fnatic is way too underleveled. And that's really baiting them in the rear. Yeah, they feel like we're talking about focus fire when Era doesn't even have a level up it. And I'm expecting he would go for it now that we're getting a little bit later. No, he's still going to go win run. I really thought he was going to go focus fire at 10 and 11. Uh, despite Dyer's the fact that I think a lot denied. of Wind Rangers, this build makes sense, but I feel like you're getting a little bit late into the game now. Like 25 minutes, you need to start having that that focus fire, planning for the future. Because what happens if you don't actually start winning these team fights and you don't have focus fire available um, when the bear does push in? I think that was an excellent point that focus fire will be strong against him, uh, but it's going to depend on Era actually having those levels and also going to need Axe as well. Hmm. Yeah, and he needs a damage item right after us, so far. And uh, this is why I'm kind of fine with not picking up Focus Fire. He's not doing anything. His damage is 86. Mm. If you combine this with the damage reduction, 50% of level 1, or like it would be 40 right now, because he doesn't have the Agnum set up for a long time. 1.3k gold still to be uh, still to be farmed. It just, it just is not coming online. Oh, they actually find FNG here, or are they? No, this is... Oh, they're trying to sniff him out here, it looks like. What this, is this ward here? What the... I, what? I'm, I'm really sure. Well, I'm waiting for uh, him to leave. It looks like you do get vision of inside the pit. Uh, inside their base. Mm. You see yeah, that? Yeah, you're right. It, like this, is, this angle here? That's pretty good. That Damn. is very interesting. That is a whole new ward. I'm not entirely sure why they placed so many goddamn wards in this area. Like, they yeah, have this whole entire lane completely surrounded. Now, two of them are older wards, but they were still placed in very close proximity to each other. You very, sure not far. Very, very, very no, odd. I don't know. Maybe it's just for the Sand King to just like here mm -hmm. and then have a great epicenter ultimate. I'm not sure. Oh, the bear could be in a bit of trouble. If they get a bear from the smoking, uh, this is pretty much the best trade they can actually look for right now. And if you give this to Aaron or something, way. Oh, please. Yeah, it's going to go yeah. down. He, there's, there's no way it's getting away. So, good pick off. Cheshire Cat forced to summon a new one. And, uh... Yeah, in two minutes, felt double bad. Yeah, probably not looking to fight for the next two minutes, you're right, but... Take a look back at that Goldeen. It has stagnated a little bit as uh, we haven't seen any team fights go down. So Fnatic are keeping in um, 
keeping up with Power Rangers. Like, ever since the team fight started and stopped and we had more farming going on, Fnatic are doing a decent job keeping up, despite the fact that they obviously have much less area to be able to farm up. They're locked inside their base most of the time. They can only farm really the lanes. I don't think they can really go out and farm the jungle anytime soon. So Power Rangers should be able to get a lot more out of the map, but it seems Fnatic are doing a decent job keeping up, and a part of that is going to be um, the split push coming out from Hani, as he's pushing pretty aggressively in this bottom lane. Yeah, speaking of Hani, he's got his heart completed as well as 1.2k gold in the bank. So he is going to be way more tanky you now. And I feel like this is exactly the frontline carry Fnatic need because Trixie suddenly, uh, he's got way oh, less God. HP. He sees oh, what's Hani. about to happen. You've got a hasted up Scandal who's going to get nice oh, no. and close now. The Centaur ultimate going up, but it's perfectly timed by Scandal who stuns him up. And there goes that ultimate. Now Hani is transforming himself into a big bad wolf. He will be able to walk away, but they know that's on cooldown where the Aghanim's upgrade for this Beastmaster means it's going to be off cooldown in just a very short amount of time. So if they want to, they can try and abuse that about 20 second gap where they have Beastmaster ultimate, but Lycan doesn't have his. And uh, they could, but that would depend on them pushing out pretty aggressively right now. And it doesn't look like they're going to. Yeah, it's way too much of a commitment, I feel like. And at the same time, well, just have J4 farming up top lane. He's now going to force up as well. So even if he doesn't have the per most perfect uh, initiation, he can just burst strike and then his ultimate is going to just wreck people. What I like though, the Centaur, Trixie, so he picked up a pipe. He doesn't have any sort of HP pool, but if, I mean, at this point, he's just a suicide bomber anyway. Mm -hmm. Blink in, double edge, two storm, stampede, and pop your pipe for your whole team whenever you see the second ult team, and that's it. I mean, Trixie doesn't have anything more, and that's all right. Picking up the pipe is a very big one. Uh, still, I kind of want to have him go for any sort of sustain, maybe even a heart on himself. And then you have those super carries, uh, super tanky guys in the in the front lines for the error as well as Trixie, and maybe error can just. Um, yeah, what did I say? I said Era. I want to say Hani and Trixie. Here we go. And Era can just... Uh, go the no Tail. He's going to jump on FNG. Doesn't get the ward trap. Needs to find a shackle here. No Tail doesn't get it. That's uh, another big mistake there from No Tail. That's twice now that he's tried to pick off a hero with the wards and has failed in some aspect and has not been able to get the kill. Uh, I want to actually point out Era's build right here, and this is why I wanted to see him getting focus fire at 10 and 11. Planning for the future, right? Unless you just happen to get lucky enough to get a whole bunch of levels, if you start leveling up Windrun, you're not going to have level 2 focus fire, I think, when you need it. But, as I say, that wow. era, he doesn't strong. actually finish up the Ags. So, they, okay, now his build makes more sense. If you're not going to finish up the Ags and you go Maelstrom, then sure, fine. Maxing out Windrun and having no levels of focus fire is alright. Oh, here we go. Oh, hold up, now being stripped going up, but it's going to be immediately stopped. No tell now, being stunned up. They're not going to be able to get that last hit. Pipe is going down, and J4 has to blink himself away. FNG does not get caught. Good force staff, double force staff going out, getting himself some distance away from a Fnatic. We we're looking to finish him off, and now this bear just keeps on going. It's got Radiance, it's got a Mjolnir active on him. If he can get this entangle, one, two shot. No, the burrow strike was so damn close there, but not quite getting it. Cheshire Cat could have micro his bear a little bit better, but... Holy shit. But there is no Aegis anymore, it just got expired. Ay ay ay. Alright, yeah. so I'm really careful here. Yep, with the uh, AC that was picked up by the Lone Druid earlier. Now they're gonna try and jump in. Good shackle shot, but not in the position they wanted to see it. They need to catch up this bear when he's up the ramp. If they go down the ramp at all, they're probably gonna be going into a bad team fight. They just gonna pick off this bear and see if they can kill it real quickly. As they are gonna be losing their tier three. If they don't commit sometime soon, now they're gonna go on it. Not stunned up, but does have that arc. It's going to be a trade him. Oh, J4, he actually jumped in, going for the supports in the back. One goes down, now the other's gonna fall. No tail. He just needs one more hit. No, he just forced out himself down. He doesn't think it's worth the trade. So no tail will get out. Trixie now popped the ultimate as well. Hani, he's still alive thanks to that heart, but he's being chased away. The tier three tower has gone down. Power Rangers, they're still alive and kicking. They're gonna finish off these wards, maybe get the melee racks before they back out. Ice blast will force them back a little bit. There goes the melee racks. Not sure if they can commit to the range racks in time, but it doesn't look like Fnatic will get there. Power Rangers, they claim their first set of racks and they will back out in complete safety, not losing a single hero there. Whoa, I spoke too soon. Scandal gets hit by the stun. Now the follow-up double edge and Hani will be popping the ultimate to catch up with them.
That's a really big kill, and suddenly Fnatic has spotted a gem. And the problem Fnatic had was also the map control. This is why Noto went for those crazy big plays, which didn't work out in the end. Because now he's gonna have his gem, and now he can just deward his heart out. There is not many wards anyways now up on the map from PR, because they just... I mean, they just farm the old map, so you don't really need wards anyways. Uh, but still, it's a good one. And they are losing their Rex, which is kind of overdue. Um, I would have said, like, 10 minutes ago, that Power Rangers should have had a, a Rex. But so far, Fnatic, they're still not out of this game. It's gonna be very, very hard to come back here. Uh, especially with the Basher up now on the bear as well. And Lycan's gonna have a very bad time in those fights. But, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe Era can just surprise me with some uh, crazy Aghanim Scepter ultimates. I'm uh, not sure, but <laughs> we're gonna find out very soon, I guess. Yeah, um, <laughs> I really want to see, like, he's got, he's got the Mjolnir. He's got, like... Even at this point, like if he went for the Agnims, he would have a 15. Like he, he goes from a 50% to in a short amount of time with another level. And then the Agnims, he goes from 50% damage reduction to 15. Not a goal like going for the Mjolnir, I'm fine with. But now that you have the Mjolnir, like you still need that attack speed to be able to kill that bear faster. I don't care if it's like at level one, 50% damage reduction at least you're going to be able to get off a whole bunch of procs of that maelstrom so not only you're doing a lot of damage to that bear but you're also killing all the creeps that are following up that bear i kind of feel he needs that in order to beat back the bear Trace is going to get initiated on looks like he's going to be popped pipe goes out but the follow-up stun catches a bolt well played by J4, Mega Kill Streak on the way of both Moon and Cheshire Cat. And now Power Rangers in a great position to mop up even more as Era's been caught out by the, the uh, Sleep. The follow up stun is the easiest kill of their life. And now they should be able to take down a second set of Rex. And dare I say it, but I feel like Fnatic are going to be calling the GG here sometime soon. Two racks down. They only have six kills to their name. They're going to try one last stand here. Fnatic, the odds are against them here for this whole entire team fight. Half the ward's already down. Now J4 is being stunned. Up. Hani's trying to do what damage he can, but with heart build, he's not doing much. There goes one hero now. Hani's gonna fall as well. The instant buyback from Melkel to try and save him, but the Maelstrom Frog says no. Power Rangers, they do take their second set of racks, and GG is the call from No Tail. So, Power Rangers, I don't think many people were betting on them going up against Fnatic, but there is a reason that they're tied to Fnatic in the Dark 2 Champions League Season 3 right now, and because they do provide these sort of upsets so the first game will go their way however these are two game series all the all the games all the matches in dota 2 champions league season three are all two game series 